we are up to J6, and J6 is a standard block in the book. I have my arrows indicating which way I wanted my directional fabric to go when I discovered I don't have a directional fabric. And then this was the ones with um, my focus fabric on it as well. And I didn't have any fussy cutting to do, so it didn't matter. But I figured the marks were still good for other types of fabric. So I have my blocks all laid out here. And this is pretty basic. I'm going to baste all of these and I'm going to assemble these in rows. And then assemble the rows together. The What I like to do is for these I like to do the short ends first and then the sides but I think I'm going to alternate that so that like for example this one I would do the ends first and then the sides and then this one I do the sides first and then the ends. I'm going to see how that works because the reason I do the ends first is because it gives me a crisper edge here because if you have all this fabric that you're folding into this it makes this seem a little longer. But at any rate the squares are going to be one two and then three and four are going to be base and this is going to be opposite so I do the tops and then the sides and then the sides and then the tops it's just a little easier to piece that way is why I like to do that so I will get started with my basting and assembling the first row so when I was basting I did decide to go ahead and do the short the short ends of this first and then the long sides when I try to do it the long sides first and then the short sides every other one, it created too much bulk in the end. So what I'm going to have to make sure that I do is when I'm attaching these two pieces is that I want to make sure that I'm on the absolute edge of both sides so that I don't accidentally add growth into this section. So I'm going to go ahead and base the, or, uh, stitch these together. So I put my bottom row together. And it's all stitched and so this is what it should look like based on whatever your fabrics are so next I am going to take these pieces and stitch those together the one thing you want to make sure is as you are piecing a short sided section together like this is to make sure that you get them all in a single line because when you get to this they could easily get all mangled up and while you can work that in up here and it will line up it's best to do your, your best to line it up as you stitch it. So I will get to the next one. So I've got the next row done. And so this is what you should have. You get two background pieces with the background in the center. And then this is going to attach to this. So I will attach this to keep this straight. And then I will go and do the next row, which is this whole section right here. So I got the next row all assembled and all I got to do then is attach it to my already assembled other two rows and so it should be opposite. As you're assembling these you should have opposite colors going on. So I'm going to attach this and then I'll move on to the next row right there. So I've attached the third row and now on to the fourth. So the fourth row is now assembled, and I will put that on the other three that I already have put together, just like so. So I've attached the last row to the top of my J6 block, and now if I flip it over, it is all complete. The key to this block is to make sure that your lines line up at each intersection so that you get a nice crisp edge.